if you had the special gift of seeing the future before it actually happens, I wonder what you would do about it. If you had known through this special gift that a disaster was about to occur and it could be prevented, I wonder what you would do about it. In our gospel today, Jesus is speaking like a prophet pronouncing an oracle about the future. It is one of the few passages where we hear about Jesus weeping. And what is he weeping about? About a terrible disaster that would actually take place 37 years later. And that was the destruction of the city of Jerusalem by the Romans that took place in 70 AD. Listen to how Jesus describes what he is seeing in the future according to St. Luke. Narinig ninyo sa ating gospel. Let me quote Jesus. He said, Your enemies will raise a palisade against you. They will encircle you and hem you in on all sides. They will smash you to the ground and your children within you. And they will not leave one stone upon another within you. If you have been to the Holy Land, Kung naka-experience na kayo ng pilgrimage in the Holy Land, and you have had the chance of visiting Jerusalem, most likely part of your trip would have included a visit to a very special church called Dominus Flevit. Dominus Flevit. And that is Latin for, the Lord wept at nanangis ang Panginoon. If you enter the church and you sit inside and you look out from its window, you will see a perfect view of the old city of Jerusalem. The Dome of the Rock, the exact location of the ancient temple. You can close your eyes and let the words of Jesus play like a video, anticipating by almost four decades the tragic events that would lead to the destruction of the temple, the city, and its walls by the Romans. Why is Jesus weeping in today's gospel? Well, because he could see the future. He could not stop it from happening. He could not prevent his own people from taking the path that would lead to their doom and destruction. He says this. He says this is bound to happen anyway. Why? Because you did not recognize the time of your visitation. Hindi nyo kinilala ang araw ng kanyang pagdalaw. What is that? Visitation. Well, usually the coming of the prophet or the coming of a prophet in Israelite society was called the Lord's visitation. Kaya lang, they often realized that they had been visited by the Lord through a prophet after the oracle of the prophet had been fulfilled already. They would just look back and they would say, we have been told that this was going to happen. We had been warned by the prophet. Pero matigas ang ulo natin, hindi tayo nakinig. We did not listen. We even took part in ridiculing the prophet as a madman. Not only did we take offense at the words of the prophet, we even put him to death. 
in order to silence him. And now that the destruction that he predicted and tried to prevent is upon us, we have no one to blame but ourselves. Wala tayong masusumbatan kundi sarili natin. In the Gospel of Matthew, instead of just describing Jesus as weeping over Jerusalem, the evangelist puts a word of lament in the mouth of Jesus. In Matthew 23, verse 37, ganito ang sinasabi ni Jesus. And that's the parallel of this Gospel. Sabi ni Jesus, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you who kill the prophets, you who stone those who are sent to you, how many times have I yearned to gather your children together as a hen gathers her young under her wings, but you were unwilling. You were unwilling. It is Matthew who makes me realize that it is actually what Jesus knows about the past that makes him see the future. Kasi madalas nating mapagkamalan yung prophecy as panghuhula, fortune telling, as predicting what is about to happen before it actually happens. Of course, foretelling the future is part of the prophetic ministry. But the lament of Jesus makes it very obvious that it is his awareness of past history that gives him an inkling about what will happen in the future. Kaya din natin yon by looking back to the past. He is actually lamenting that the present generation He is actually lamenting that the present generation has a very short memory and is doomed to repeat history. You could feel that when he says, Kung alam nyo lang, if this day you only knew what makes for peace, but now it is hidden from your eyes. You know, this is Jesus' way of denouncing the city called Jerusalem. In Hebrew, ang pangalan ng Jerusalem ay Jerusalem, At ang ibig sabihin, the city of peace. Ang lungsod ng kapayapaan that will never experience peace because of its forgetfulness of the past. Palagay ko ho, may malaking sunog. Pakisama na lang natin sa panalangin natin. Napakarami na ng bumberong dumaan. You know, the French people have a word for the past, repeating itself in the present. In French, they would say, déjà vu. Of course, sa Pilipinas, déjà vu. It's supposed to be pronounced as déjà vu. It's like we have been there. We have seen it all, just as it is happening. Na-experience nyo na ba yung may nangyayari tapos sabihin mong, nangyayari na to ah. And when the destruction of Jerusalem actually happened in 70 AD, I imagine the Jewish people saying, this is exactly what happened to us in 586 BC in the hands of the Babylonians. Umuulit lang ang kasaysayan. Mga kapatid, in the age of digital technology, suggestion ko lang, at kung merong historians na, na nagpa-follow ng ating misa, 
I suggest that our historians translate our history books into videos for our non-reading present generation so that they could watch them. Kasi kung bibigyan mo lang ng libro, hindi na sila magbabasa. Baka sakali, video, pwede pa. But there would not even be any need for that if only we found time ourselves to do the storytelling to the next generation. Kayo ho ba kinuwentuhan din ng parents ninyo? I remember my parents and my grandparents para silang sirang plaka. Paulit-ulit nilang kinuwento ang gyerang hapon. Pero hindi ako nagsawang makinig dahil marami kang matututunan sa aral ng nakaraan. Now, the history is being revised and woven like a fiction story about thou an ideal society that never was or an ideal president that never existed. And when they make a comeback, we have no one to blame but ourselves. Please, let us not make the Lord weep again. Kahit papaano, there is still something that we can do to avoid a tragic repetition of history.